the SEC coaching situation. And we haven't even got to the NFL yet of what's going to happen there. Tennessee Volunteers, you're on the clock. Who do you want? And by the way, now there's a report that the Raiders and John Gruden reportedly are talking. Sure, why not? I can't keep track of it. Maybe Deion Sanders who joins us now. Deion, you know, when you look at these coaching changes now, what bothers you more, what you see in the NFL or college? I don't follow college football, so I could – I don't know nothing that's going on at the college level. I love the pro game. I, I love all the everything about it. It intrigues me, and and I and, and adore it. Now, John what, Gruden should be coaching football, but where? He should be coaching. If, if I were John Gruden, I would go to college. It's comfortable because he's got um, accumulated, accumulated, accumulated. Say that word for me. Coaching acumen? No, acclimated. Ac- that's it. Oh, acclimated. Acclimated oh, with okay. home. Okay. He's a dad now. He's a husband. He's got into that realm. So to not to offset that, college would best suit him because he he's really is a good guy. And I think he would make uh, – turn these young men that's going to college into real viable men, assets to our communities. I would go, and it's more security there. It's more security. Pro game now, two two years, you don't win, you're getting out. You're fired. Uh, that's the way I've felt, but I look at college now, and I wonder if, because uh, you do get to control more in college than you do the NFL. And I think that that will benefit somebody. Like, most of these coaches are control freaks in the first place, when you say. Well, that's what a coach is. Yeah. That's why he's a coach. He gets to control things. He gets to whistle. The uh, Jets quarterbacking situation. Did you hear that uh, they've they've announced their starter for Jacksonville? Who's the starter? Who do you think? Should be Tebow. Nope. But they would go back to Sanchez. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but that, that's that's right. If if it's not Tebow, if he's not healthy enough, you got to go back to Sanchez. The young kid does not know the offense uh, whatsoever to send him into Jacksonville and suffer damaging his confidence from here on. So you got to go back to Sanchez if you're not playing Tim Tebow. If you play Tim Tebow, Sanchez is not playing again because Tim Tebow will win, especially at home in Jacksonville. Then why aren't they going with him? Uh, obviously, he's not well. Um, he, must be, he must be still suffering uh, his injury. But if he were... I don't even think if he was able that he would have gotten the game last week. I, I just think they've been negating this whole situation because of the Tebow mania. Because you would not go back to Sanchez had Tebow played. Was it a mistake to bring in Tebow? No. It's a good idea. But I don't think they knew what they were getting into when they got into it. Because it's a lot comes with Tim Tebow. A lot of fanfare, a lot of uh, doubt, a lot of insecurity, a lot of speculation. All that comes with Tim Tebow. But I bring him in if I plan on playing him at quarterback. I don't bring him in to spark right. Mark Sanchez because we've seen how that's worked. It, it, right. didn't, it didn't work. You're, you're, you're right. I think they brought him in with, with all those thoughts. Uh, but as things um, transpired, things changed. Because of what he stands for, for and he would. I'm a Tebow fan. I think he he would win. I don't think he's the best quarterback mechanical, but I think he is a winner. That's who he is. He's Deion Sanders from the NFL Network. They got Thursday night Broncos and the Raiders at eight Eastern. You can also see him every Sunday on NFL Game Day highlights at seven thirty Eastern NFL Game Day final at eleven thirty Eastern. Who's your MVP right now? Oh my God, that's that's tough. That's tough. It, it would have to be Tate Manning, Tom Brady, um, JJ Watt, Vaughn Miller. That that's it. Um, Adrian Peterson. Could you give it to a rookie? No. If Andrew Luck wins ten games, how is somebody more valuable than him? You can't mention Andrew Luck without mentioning RG three. Yeah, but if it's, he, it's no way. But if he wins ten games, it it doesn't matter. Well, yeah, I have it, to factor in value. You got to make the playoffs if you're going to win the MVP. No. 
Yeah, Not no, really. I don't think anybody. When's the last time somebody won the MVP and they didn't make the playoffs? Well, when the last time a guy other than a quarterback? Yeah. Won <laughs> well, so we, we that is we, true. We shouldn't even call it MVP. Let's call it most quarterback. <laughs> so, yeah, MBQ. MBQ. Let's, let's just do that. But it, it's it's no way you can say what you want about luck. But then you look at RG3 statistics and say, oh, my God, this ain't even close. I love Luck. I think Luck is only his last name. There's nothing lucky about him. But it's no way. We we, we forgot about the three interceptions because of the last drive. Uh, yeah. We forgot about that. But every time RG3 plays on our national stage, he blows our mind. He blows our mind. Who does he remind you of? Nobody. That's why he blows your mind. Someone that blows your mind don't remind you of somebody. Yeah, sometimes. No. Yeah. No. Not with me. You, I, I don't. I don't meet someone beautiful. Oh man, she reminds me of my girlfriend in <laughs> fifth grade. No. She reminds you of something you never had. That's why she blows your mind. What did you think of uh, Bob Costas' uh, commentary at halftime? That uh, what it was on and where where it was. I don't know what he said. What did he say? Uh, he was talking about what happened in Kansas City, and uh, I don't. I don't even know what he said. Do you have a Do you have a problem with talking about? No, something that's no, serious. I, I understand that candidly. I understand that hopefully, I was there. What do you mean? There, I understanding. I understand what that man encountered. And what he felt, what he thought. I was suicidal once. I understand that. I understand how you just want to end it and you want to escape. You want to get away from the trials and tribulations and the trappings of life. And where do you go? Who do you go to when you're the answer for everyone? I understand it candidly. How did you avoid it? I had to fight through it. Gave my life to the Lord. Things got better. How did you get to that point? by um, people that, that were placed in my life along the way that I had to turn to when times got tough. It, it, it's more than just this one kid feeling that way. He's just the only one who had the nerve to do it. It's, it's a myriad of guys that's competing in, the, in professional sports that feel that way, as well as college as well as high school, but he had the nerve to do it. I'm not applauding that. I, I just have a disdain for, for what happened, especially to the young woman and everyone associated with her and her family. But I do understand because I was there. Who do you turn to when you're the answer? Who, who is there to tell you no or this or that when – the majority of people in your life is on your payroll or have their hand up, out. Not to help you up, but to get it filled. Who do you turn to? Did you hide it from your teammates? My teammates didn't even understand because I was who I was. I was the answer to my teammates. So when I needed answers, how could they be there for me? Because I was the answer. I once to go during a whole bottle of aspirin right there in front of them, and no one said a word. So I understand it. Been there. Uh, if a lot of if a lot of these guys would would be honest with you, they're there right now. I think that's what Brady Quinn said. When you ask somebody, "Hey, how do you feel? Are you being honest? Do you really care?" Or if you answer, "Are you really being honest?" When somebody asks you that. And I definitely could empathize with Brady Quinn for what he's endured in his professional career. And there's a lot of doubt, a lot of insecurity, a lot of heartache, a lot of pain, and especially when you have a season that's going that's that pathetic. Um, because oftentimes sports is your outlet, is your escape. But when your escape is no escape, what's really going on? How close, that's hard, man. How close did that, you get, though, to killing yourself? I ran a car off the road in Cincinnati. On purpose. Ran a car off the highway. I think I was three for four that night before. But what? Three for four. A few stolen bases. Still able to focus on my job, but 
just just feeling turmoil and ready to end it. I remember it candidly. So you just got through like with the it was Reds yesterday. Excuse me. You just got through with the Reds game. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. But Going you, through it, I, I was in the midst of this. Is ironic. Another darn divorce. I was in the midst of another, uh, my first divorce. The only thing that I thought that loved me were my kids. Now they were stripped away from me because of our ignorant system, and and I, I just start spiraling downward. That's why we got to be careful who we look up to, who we call role model, because the majority of these models are playing a role, just playing a role, trick or treat. With the name on the back of the jerseys. That's it. And the thing about the NFL, I love it. And they're doing so many things to help, so you can't fault them. There's so many avenues and ways of assistance and help when you're feeling like this. But the problem is it's a very small fraternity, and the fraternity don't trust anyone outside its realm. Because if you tell someone how you're really feeling, they're going to go tell the coach. Yep. They're going to tell the front office. Now they're going to grab you and deal with you. You don't want that. Well, you got guys who are lying about concussions. Alex Smith was truthful about a concussion. It cost him his job. Well, I think his play cost him his job So eventually. This is the same kid that they wanted to replace. They didn't want to, his head coach didn't want to sign him back. Yep. So that's cost him his job. That's the way his head coach has always felt. And now he just got sick and tired of hiding it because he understands that this timing that he has, Mr. Harbaugh, is few and far in between. You may not ever reach this time again because your defense isn't what they were last year, so you see yourself slipping away. So you've got to make a change right now to try to maximize this moment that you may never see. Good to talk to you again. Uh, Good to talk I, to you, my man. I didn't know it was going to get this serious, but um, I, I, I do appreciate, you know, you're honest. Um, and I, I appreciated that. Well, I never stop being honest, but, man, I'm going to always be that. And I appreciate you. Thank you're you. You're a good guy. You're, you're a good guy there, man. Thank you, D. God bless you. All right. Deion Sanders, NFL Network.